Hey guys, Derek from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ and we do it one bite at a time. So to finish off the week with Come Follow Me with section 66, I want to introduce you to a guy by the name of William E. McClellan. So William E. McClellan was a young school teacher who came across the gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, let me take you to Saints to give you a little bit of details about this. So this is uh, chapter 13 of Saints and it says, 25-year-old William McClellan visited the graves of his wife Cynthia Ann and their baby. William and Cynthia Ann had been married less than two years when she and the baby died. As a school teacher, William had a quick mind and a gift for writing, but he found nothing to comfort him in the lonely hours since he lost his family. What a tough situation. So one day after teaching his class, William heard two men preach about the Book of Mormon. One of them, David Whitmer, declared that he had seen an angel who had testified that the Book of Mormon was true. The other, Harvey Whitlock, astonished William with the power and clarity of his preaching. William invited the men to teach him more and he was again struck by Harvey's words. I have never heard such preaching in all my life, William wrote in his journal. The glory of God seemed to encircle the man. Eager to meet Joseph Smith and investigate his claims, William followed David and Harvey to independence. Joseph had already returned to Kirtland by the time that they had arrived, but William met Edward Partridge, Martin Harris, and Hiram Smith, heard their testimonies. He also spoke with other men and women in Zion and marveled at the love and peace which he saw among them. While taking a long walk through the woods one day, he talked with Hiram about the Book of Mormon and the beginning of the church. William wanted to believe, but in spite of everything he had heard so far, he still was not convinced to join the church. He wanted a witness from God that he had found the truth. So early the next morning, he prayed for direction. Reflecting on his study in the Book of Mormon, William realized it had opened his mind to new light. He knew then that it was true and he felt honor bound to testify of it. He was certain he had found the living gospel of Jesus Christ. So Hiram baptized and confirmed William later that day and the two men soon set out for Kurt. Now, as they were preaching along the way, we'll talk more about this in Monday's episode, William discovered that he had a talent for captivating audiences and debating ministers. Okay, what a talent. He sometimes acted arrogantly uh, when he preached. However, he felt bad when he saw his boasting drove the spirit away. So once they arrived in Kirtland, William was anxious to speak with Joseph. He had several specific questions he wanted answered, but he kept them to himself praying that Joseph would discern them on his own and would reveal their answers. William was now unsure where to go and what to do with his life. Without a family, he could devote himself fully to the Lord's work, but part of him wanted to look out for his own welfare first. So that night, William went home with Joseph and asked him for a revelation from the Lord. As he knew many others had done, Joseph agreed, and as the prophet received the revelation, William heard the Lord answer each of his questions. His anxiety gave way to joy, and he knew he had found a prophet of God. So this section's a unique one. The questions were never given, but the answers were. So we're going to play a little game called William E. McClellan Jeopardy. Because if you've ever played Jeopardy before, that's where they give the answers, and then you got to come up with the questions. So what I'd like to do here is just let you read through the whole section. It's only 13 verses. So go read the sections with your family or as an individual. And I want you to see if you can come up with what you think the five questions were that William E. McClellan had, because the answers are there. See if you can come up with the questions. And when we come back, I'll show you what I believe maybe the five questions might have been. Okay, so I think I might have the five questions. I am probably wrong, but I think I might have what a basic idea of these are. And maybe you guys came up with some similar ones. So question number one, I think, is what is my spiritual standing? Because you look at verse number three and it says, Wherefore I say unto you, my servant William, you're clean, but not all. That's a great statement. I mean, it's not a, I wouldn't want that said to me, but it's a powerful statement. Repent, therefore, of those things which are not pleasing in my sight, saith the Lord, for the Lord will show them unto you. So what's my spiritual standing? That's just a thought. Question number two, what is my role in the church? I've closed down my school. I've settled my business affairs in Illinois. What am I to do now? Well, you go to verses five through eight, where it says, uh, it is my will that you should proclaim my gospel from land to land, city to city in those regions round about. Uh, Tarry not many days in this place, go not up to the land of Zion as yet, but inasmuch as you can send, send. Otherwise, think not of thy property. Go to the eastern lands, bear your testimony. Uh, Let my servant Samuel Smith go with you, forsake him not, give him thine instructions. He that is faithful shall be made strong in every place. I, the Lord, will go with you. So it seems like he wants to know what the Lord wants of him. 
Okay, so now before I go to question number three, I want to share with you a little story here. It's actually right here. You can click on it right in your digital scriptures. It's an article called William McClellan's Five Questions for the Revelation in Context. So you go down and it says, after the conference that was held, McClellan traveled to Kirtland and in the course of his journey, stepped off a large log and strained my ankle very badly, so much that he petitioned Joseph to heal him. He laid his hands on the ankle, McClellan wrote in his journal, and it was healed, although it swelled much and had pained me severely. So he saw this ability to be able to heal. So maybe question number three is this. I've seen and personally experienced the power to heal by both Joseph and Hiram Smith. Will I be able to have this same power? Well, you go to verse number nine and it says, lay your hands upon the sick. They shall recover. Return not until I the Lord shall send you. Be patient in afflictions. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be open unto you. So yeah, you, William, you go for that. You lay hands on people's heads and heal them as well. Okay, so here's question number four, in my opinion. How can I escape the temptation of adultery and other sins which have burdened me, especially since the recent death of my wife? Well, look at verse number 10. Seek not to be cumbered. Cumbered means obstructed, hampered, hindered, um, forsake all unrighteousness. Commit not adultery, a temptation which thou hast been troubled. Okay, that's a tough one because how would you like to have the Lord bring up for the rest of the church, the whole world? Here's something that you have struggled with. It's probably more than I wanted to know about William E. McClellan, but here's the Lord saying, look, I'm aware of you. Here's what you have struggled with. Uh, and so seek not to be cumbered by it, okay? And again, that you go back to that verse number nine, ask and you shall receive, knock and it shall be open. If you're struggling with those things, let me help you. Okay, so here's what I think question number five might be. What is my role in building up Zion? Okay, so verses 11 and 12, keep these sayings, they are true and faithful. Thou shalt magnify thine office and push many people to Zion with songs of everlasting joy upon their heads. Continuing these things into the, even unto the end, you shall have a crown of eternal life at the right hand of my Father who is full of grace and truth. Okay, so you can see how important this revelation was to William E. McClellan. In fact, there's a quote here where he says, I now testify in the fear of God that every question which I had thus lodged in the ears of the Lord were answered to my full and entire satisfaction. I desired it for a testimony of Joseph's inspiration, and I to this day consider it to me an evidence which I cannot refute. Anybody who has gone to like get a patriarchal blessing, for example, you go with questions that are just between you and God, and you get a patriarch who doesn't even know you very well, all of a sudden uh, answers those questions. And it's really cool. So have those questions in your mind. Um, President Eyring said this, one of the questions we must ask of our Heavenly Father in private prayer is this, what have I done today or not done which displeases thee? If I can only know, I will repent with all my heart without delay. That humble prayer will be answered and the answers will surely include the assurance that asking today was better than waiting to ask tomorrow. So I love that because we have those questions in our hearts. We really pray about them. The Lord will answer those questions. I know that's true. And thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing. Godspeed. We will see you next week. Bye-bye.